Okay. Can people in the back hear me? Wait. Oh, sorry. While they are um, wrapping up, um, we can start to talk about today's topic. So we're going to give an overview about what will appear in the midterm four exam. Um, so as usual, um, the format of the exam. So in this exam, we're going to have uh, like two parts. The first part will be six multiple choice um, problems, just like usual. So this will basically examine uh, how well you understand the concepts. And then in the second part, we're going to have two graphical analysis problems. Uh, you, you are going to need a ruler and calculator to <clears throat> thank you guys. Yeah, Thanks. thank you. So you're gonna need a, a ruler and a calculator to do the graphical analysis, right? Imagine what you can you will do. Uh, and you you can bring up one page of notes, just like uh, just like usual. Okay. Uh, also overall, um, in this exam, we will cover absorption stripping uh, lecture that lecture as well as the uh, binary continuous distillation. So batch distillation will not be covered. So we we'll have to worry about that. Okay, uh, regarding uh, kind of the concepts here, this. Okay, regarding uh, uh, absorption of stripping, right? So um, basically, you, we talk about like two different type type of uh, uh, two different types of towers, tree tower and the uh, taxi tower, right? So if you are given a you know, tree tower, you need to know how it works. Right. What's the mechanism? What what is the absorber and what's the function of an absorber and a stripper? Right? And what do you need? What are the feeds and what are the kind of products and how does it work? Uh, what's the mechanism? Uh, for a tree tower, why we need multiple layers? Okay. Then uh, what is the requirement for the for the liquid absorbance? And for a typical absorption process, what parameters are given? Right? You know, typically uh, absorbers are used to separate gas mixtures, in which we use a liquid absorbent flowing down from the from the tower to basically dissolve uh, the solid right uh, in the gas mixture. So I guess so. So so the solid will be transferred from the gas phase to the um, to the liquid phase. And so that typically we know the gas flow rate, and we need to, we know the feed compositions, right? That that include the composition of the gas mixture entering the tower from the bottom, as well as the composition of the liquid absorbents coming down. Uh, we know the desired separation. That 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 is basically when your gas stream exits your tower, we need to set a target, right? We need to achieve, for example, if we have a uh, you know feed that contains 20% of the solid rate, and maybe you want to target less than 5% when it exits the tower. Right? That's your separation target. Okay. So those are the parameters uh, typically are given. Then what are the design parameters? We basically need to design, um, pick the liquid flow rate, right? the liquid absorbent, absorbent flow rate, and as well as the number of trees in order to achieve uh, for that given fit composition, um, we need to we need to pick these two parameters to achieve the desired separation outcome. Okay. So, any questions about about this? Yeah, can you expand on what do you mean uh, requirement for absorbent? So, um, there's one slide in the in the lecture notes right, that just says, in order to achieve good separation outcome. Uh, your liquid absorbents have a few requirements. For example, it needs to have high solubility for your solid rate. Right? That's a basic requirement. Then uh, second of all, it needs to have, uh, you know, kind of not volatile. Otherwise, you are losing your liquid absorbents, right? And it needs to be non-corrosive and, uh, uh, you know, potentially environmental, envi environmentally benign, economical, right? So there's a, there's a whole list of uh, you know, requirements on the lecture. But this is just to test you, uh, test your understanding, right? You, you, you really you don't have to memorize everything. But if you understand how it works, 
and it's natural. Right? You're, you, you need you 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 need you need to have high solubility, right? Because the mechanism, the absorber works by transferring the solid from the gas phase to the liquid phase, and it should not be volatile, right? Because we expect if it, it's volatile, then it's going to enter the gas phase, right? Then it's going to you know exit with this exit in gas phase. Then it's going to basically contaminate your 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 your, your product, right? Okay. Any other questions about this? No. So then uh, we introduced basically to answer that two questions, right? Well, what is the liquid absorbent flow rate? How many stages we need? We introduced these graphical methods for tree towers, right? Uh, in which we can basically apply, uh, we can do this, you know, step operation. Uh, basically, we need to understand um, how, under what scenario, under what assumptions we can apply these graphical methods. What are the assumptions? Uh, here, two very important basic assumptions here is one is equilibrium, right? Basically, we assume um, each tray we reach an equilibrium. When you have your liquid phase entering your stage and your gas phase entering your stage, they're going to mix, right? And then mass transfer will happen on this tray, on this plate. When they leave the stage, or when they leave the tray, uh, the leaving gas phase will be in equilibrium with the leaving liquid phase, right? That's one assumption. Um, another assumption is obviously in this case, only solid rate is transferred from the gas phase to the liquid phase. You, so you don't, have, you don't have the condensation of your gas phase, you don't have vaporization of your uh, liquid absorbance, right? That's two big assumptions. Then uh, we introduced the mole ratios, uh, x, y, and the uh, uh, solid rate free flow rate for the liquid phase and the vapor phase, you know, L prime, V prime, and the big x and y. Right, instead of all fractions and and and, and flow rate, uh, so you need to know the definition, right? If you were given x small x y l b, then you need to be able to convert that to big x y l prime v prime, right? Also, um, you need to understand why we use them. Okay. Okay. Um, then for the equilibrium, we just talk about if we assume equilibrium, then basically the uh, the gas phase leaving the tree and the liquid phase leaving the tree is in equilibrium. That means their concentrate, their composition is constrained by the key value. Okay. Uh, that gives you the key, the equilibrium line on your on your graph. Uh, then we introduced operating lines right, for the absorption power. And you need to know how the absorption, how the operating line is derived. So basically we derive it based on no balance of the, uh, you know, in, in the tower. Just look at this schematic. Um, if you draw a control volume and you can do the mole balance uh, for your solid rate and, uh, uh, and then you can, you can derive this equation. Basically, this equation relates the uh, mole composition. Of, this is like mole ratio of your gas phase, you know, kind of like an entering the end stage with the liquid composition, leaving the end stage with the you know the composition entering and leaving the first the first stage. Right? The ratio is, is is dependent on the flow rate of the liquid the vapor phase. Um, any questions about this slide? Then now. Once we have the operating line, once you know derived from mole balance, once we have the equilibrium curve derived you know, based on the key value, right? We can make such a plot right, on the x y diagram. But in this case, we're using again big X, big Y, big y. So that's the mole ratios instead of mole fractions. So this is the equilibrium line, and this is the um, then we can label. You need to know, right? Like I said, for, for absorption power, we know the fit composition. Right? That's x0 and y, I, y, y1. We also know the desired separation. Uh, that's y, sorry, that's, we know the fit composition, that's x0 and the y and plus one. Right? Also, we also know the desired separation, that y1. So we have this vertical uh, horizontal line here, we have this, Point here, and uh, if you kick a 
and typically the, the gas flow rate right is is given and if you pick a liquid flow rate then you have the ratio of l prime over v prime so you have the slope of the line of the operating line then you can just draw the operating line now the question is uh, the first concept you need to understand is what is the minimum minimum absorbent flow rate okay and what does it mean And then uh, for a given liquid at absorbent flow rate, right? You you should be you should be able to draw the line there. Then you should be able to figure out how many uh, you know, number of equilibrium stages are required in order to, to achieve the desired separation outcome, right? This is where you need to do take out your ruler and do this step of step of analysis. But make sure you know where where to start and where to end and how to interpret it, the results, right? If let's say, let's say, you know, if in this case, if we pick this flow rate, we can do the step of like this. If this point does not overlap with that point, what does it mean? Right. These are concepts you, you need to understand. Yes. I was just wondering, is there a difference between the lower case and the capital N in the Y and we have all this. This well, on this slide, we all have capital S and whatever. But if you place on your board, is there a difference? Oh, you mean this uh -huh. uh, lowercase and uh, uppercase then? Yeah. Okay, so the difference here is basically uppercase n refers to the total number of the trees in your tower. Right, that's a constant. And it's just a subscript, subscript to refer, like if we are studying, it's just like I. Right? If we are if you are interested in what happens to the N tree, then we use lowercase n to refer the basically you know this tree. Then y n plus one and x n here just refer to the uh, basically the, the the vapor composition and the, the liquid composition below this dense tree. Right. Any questions here? Yes. Won't well, we guess to like guess and check a slope if we are guess and check a slope. A slope. Like we'll be given enough information to find our prime over the time. Yes. Yes. If if you were asked to uh, find out the number of equilibrium stages, right? Then you should be able. Then the, the, the information about the flow rate will be given, or if not given, there will be sufficient information given for you to compute L prime and V prime, right? And once you have L prime and V prime, you should be able to draw that operating line. Then based on that, you can do the step off, figure out how many equilibrium stages you have. Right. So if no questions, I want to ask you, what does Minimum of ab ab absorbent flow rate mean. Any? Yes. And basically, what it says it's the minimum flow rate of the absorbent to get the separation, like how much you have to flow of your uh, liquid in order to get the separation in balance. Yes. And what on, on this figure where? Where it intersects it with the equilibrium curve at the separate separation you want. Okay, good. Then what does what at this point? What does the you know the the horizontal coordinate of this this point mean? The horizontal line. Yeah. So like if you draw a operating line, it's gonna cross y n plus one. Right. Line, so y n plus one is the desired separation. Yes. And then you have this point. What's the what does the Kind of the x coordinate of that point mean? That's the corresponding uh, liquid out, right? Yes. No. Yes. Great, great. So um, another way to interpret this minimum flow rate is basically um, you have the x coordinate of this point gives you the composition of your exiting liquid stream from your tower. Right, and if you are operating your tower at the minimum absorbent flow rate, then 
when your liquid absorbance exits the tower, it's saturated with the solid base. Right, because it sits on the equilibrium line, so it's saturated. This, it cannot dissolve anymore at that temperature. It cannot dissolve anymore uh, solid, right? And if you further reduce the, the flow rate, then you won't achieve your separation outcome because it just cannot dissolve that much. Okay. That's another way to, to look at it. Okay. Then we talk about stage efficiency. Basically, um, you know, so far we've what we've done is just theoretical analysis, right? Based on some as based on some assumptions, right? So we can get we can get a theoretical number of stages. But in practice, if you do the experiment, like what they did, right? They have to uh when they have to you know change the pack height in their setup to achieve the desired separation, right? In that way, you will figure out, uh, you know, for a tree tower, you have to, you know, change the number of trees in order to achieve the desired separation. Then you will figure out, experimentally, you will figure out the actual number of plates you need to achieve the desired separation. Then you can calculate the stage efficiency, which is ratio. Now the question is why stage efficiency is not 100%, right? Why it's lower than 100%. Okay, you need to understand that. So basically, uh, that's because our assumptions do not hold really in, in a practical actual setup. Um, uh, now, very commonly two reasons our assumptions do not hold. One is there's a heat transfer limitation, right? When they mix in a plate, they might not reach the same temperature, right? That's there's a heat transfer. So which in other words, they don't reach thermal equilibrium. Another is they don't they don't reach kind of mass transfer equilibrium. There's mass transfer limitation. Okay. Now you need to understand um, for tree tower and uh, for pack tower, where does the mass transfer? I mean, most mass transfer resistance come from, right? It's different. <clears throat> okay. Any any questions here? And for um for for for, for pack tower similarly, um I mean the first thing is why we choose pack tower. Right. So a couple of reasons here. Um, and one reason is it's you know in tree tower the tree is typically made of stainless steel, and if you are dealing with very corrosive chemicals, stainless steel is not that very good. So you have to use tree tower. Uh, you have to use pack tower. Another um, reason is. Tree tower can be efficient. So the size of the tree tower can be much smaller than the size of a tree tower. So there are, there are other reasons. You, you just need to go back to check your slides. But for tree tower, we're back to lowercase x, y, and l, and v, right? Why and what assumptions we've made here. So um, then basically, then we use two film theory to account for mass transfer between the liquid and vapor um, uh, um, in the packing, right? So, uh, so then you need to understand the difference between interface and bulk composition, right? When you, get, when you were given a you know, liquid phase, a, a two film theory, you know, a couple of parameters are labeled on that figure and then you need to know which is which. Uh, so similarly here, uh, if we do a mole balance for a pack tower, we can derive operating line like this, right? Uh, then we can just basically plot the on uh, xy diagram. We can plot the operating line. We can plot the equilibrium line, right? And this is the figure for the two figure for two fume for fume theory. Okay, so you need to understand um, basically. What does you know, X star mean? What does Y star mean, right? What's, what does Y uh, or Y subscript Y or X I, X mean? Okay. So for, when you're given this figure, what are the assumptions, right? Why, why this operating line is a straight line? What are the assumptions? Why the equilibrium line is a straight line? What are the assumptions? And in this line, there are a couple of points, right? You have A, B, C, D, E, F, right? What do they mean? And then correspondingly, you have some line segment. What do each lines, what does each line segment mean? 
this could appear in the concept problem. So any questions? So I mean, if if you still some if you still have something that you don't fully understand, I mean, right now it's it's just good time to ask. <clears throat> Okay. Then, um, well, then we introduced the concept about arc not HTTP, right? and from that we can get the height of the packing. Um, so basically, you need to know how the hog not is derived. Right? You have you don't have to do derivation, but at least you know uh, physically what we did. Right? What we did is just you know do a mole balance in pack. Tower, so then you can derive the height of I and mean, do the integral. You'll find out the height of the tower is proportional to uh, the product of two terms, right? This term multiplied by this term. This term has a unit of length, and this term is unitness, right? So physically, this just gave you a number like. So that's why it's 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 got not that's number of gas transfer unit, and this term gives you some type of length. So that's not that's uh that's half height of a theoretical uh, of a gas transfer unit, right? So if you are given this equation, right, you need to understand um basically when the height of a gas transfer unit, right, when you have a uh, higher vapor flow rate small s and small ky, then you basically have a larger height of gas transfer unit. So what does that mean? <clears throat> so that means just basically we have a higher, uh, we have high vapor flow rate, right? Uh, but you have a small surface area for your packing and then you have a very small mass transfer coefficient. That means your know, mass transfer is not so fast. And then you just need to, you just need a higher packing to achieve the same separation. So then in other words, if you want to have a really good separation using as many as as less as little packing as you want, then you want to maximize uh, you want to minimize this this term. And if V is fixed, that's the fit composition you cannot change. If if V is fixed, in order to minimize this, then you have to increase the mass transfer coefficient. Right? This is like this is the average mass transfer coefficient across the uh, the, the liquid and vapor phase. And for a pack for for a packed tower, usually the mass transfer in the gas phase is limiting, uh, not in the liquid phase. Okay. And then. Oh, sorry, S, S is a cross sectional area, A is a surface area. So you want A to be as high as possible. And, and how do you how do you achieve that? Okay. Then um, with some assumptions, we derive that um, basically HTTP, the height equivalent of a theoretical plate, is a function of hot and A, right? A is basically dependent on. How you operate the tower and the key value. Okay. Uh, and t, the theoretical number of plates, is also a function of not and t. So, any questions about that? Then um, we talk about binary distillation. Um, so first thing we need to understand is its structure and it's the concept. What are what are light key and heavy key, and how and if you were given a power, how do pressure and temperature change in the column? So basically, uh, pressure decrease as you goes up, right? The reason that, that which means pressure at the bottom is higher than the pressure at the top, and the reason is that you need the pressure just to drive your gas phase moving up. And temperature is also decreasing as you as you go up. The reason is you have higher, um, you have a higher fraction of heavy key at your bottom of the tower and a lower fraction of your heavy key at the top of the tower. 
right? The more heavy key you have in your mixture, the higher, uh, you know, boiling, like, uh, boiling temperature, boiling point it is. Right, so we introduced condenser, the boiler, the reflux drum, and the reflux ratio. Um, then in this tower, we have rectifying section, functions like an absorber, we have a stripper, uh, stri stri stripping section, function like a stripper, and we have a fixed stage connects these two sections. The fixed stage is like a single stage flash process. Then um, we derive the operating lines um, and Q line for the distillation tower. Uh, how do we derive them? Basically, operating lines are always derived based on mole balance. Right? And then basically, um, you can give them a tower, you can just uh, draw a control volume, and you can derive the operating lines. Right? For, um, for the rectifying section, um, so basically, your gas phase composition is related to the reflux ratio. And for your free perception, your gas phase composition is, is dependent on the, the slope here is dependent on the Boyard ratio. What are the bounds of the of the slope? Right. And how it is related to the L, V, and D, right? The liquid flow rate, vapor flow rate, and distillate flow rate. And what is Q? Right. We're talking about Q line, what is Q? Uh, by definition, Q is basically um, is determined by this equation or this equation. And L bar is the liquid flow rate in the stripping section. L is the liquid flow rate in the rectifying section. So Q is basically the uh, you know the liquid flow rate in the rectifying and the stripping sections are different. So there's a difference there. Q is that basically the ratio of that difference over the phase flow rate. Right. That's the definition of Q. And you should know that so that, you know, given a feed, you can compute Q. You also need to know, we know that fit composition, fit condition, not composition, fit condition affects Q, right? Uh, for a distillation column, the fit can be a liquid, a vapor, or can be a mixture of liquid and vapor. Right? And for a liquid, it can be saturated, or it can be, um, you know, undercooled. And for a, for a vapor, it can be saturated, it can also be super, super heated, right? And each scenario, you will have a different slope. You need to know that. Hmm. Then um, we talk about like, once we have the operating lines, we have Q lines, we can connect all of them on this X, Y diagram, right? And they're gonna intercept at a point, P point, right? So if we know Q line and rep, Rectifying section of the line, we can, and if, if we know the, the bottom composition, we can just draw the operating line for the for the <clears throat> stripping section. So, then if you were given a system like this, you need to know first of all, where do we locate the fake stage, and how do we find out the number of stages? Then we talk about two limiting cases. Um, one is the total reflux, based on the total reflux, um, in which we have the minimal number of stages. Okay. Then uh, we also talk about minimum reflux ratio. What is the minimum reflux ratio? What is the minimum reflux ratio? So basically your operating line for your uh, rectifying section. Um, it can only change a certain range, right? Although theoretically you can do it vertically or horizontally, but you probably you, you're not gonna achieve your separation outcome if you do that, right? So in order to achieve the separation outcome, there's only a limited range where your operating line can, can be. And uh, then for the, for the minimum number of stages, you have very high reflux ratio. That means you return a lot of, you know, return, I mean, you, you turn all of your condensed liquid back to the tower. So you will have your operating line overlap with the 45 people line. Whereas in the other case, right, 
you will uh, do your rectifying operating line will cross with your Q line on the grid. Right. And we talk about reboilers and condensers, right? That could be partial and total reboilers and condensers. So, uh, so any questions about about this? Then we talk about total reboiler and partial uh, reboiler. We talk, talk about total condenser and uh, partial condensers. Um, you need to know the difference, right? So, so if you are given, let's say in this case, you are given a tower like this. Here we have a reboiler, but we don't know what if it's if, if it's a partial and total reboiler yet. Right, then if you are given a figure like this, then you should be able to tell just from the figure, okay, this is a total reboiler or this is a partial uh, reboiler. Or on the, on, the, on, the, on the other hand, if I'm telling you, in this case, for example, if you were given a problem just to do this analysis, right, you do the step off, you figure out the number of stages, then you were you were asked what if you have a I mean if you have a partial reboiler how many equi equilibrium stages you have if you have a total reboiler how many equilibrium stages you have okay. and if um or if you have a total reboiler what 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 is your bottom composition like bottom product composition or if you have a partial reboiler what is your bottom product composition Right, so you need to be able to read that from the figure as so you do the, do the step off. Okay. Any questions here? Okay, cool. So um, that's all about the exam. If no questions, I think we can just move on with next lecture. Yeah. Yes. So since we haven't had a homework uh, even assigned on distillation, how heavy is the distillation section going to be on the exam? So it will be similar to the practice exam. You, okay. should, you should definitely do that before the exam. I mean, that's kind of the, the that's that's the most information I can give you. Okay. I cannot I cannot talk more than I'm <laughs> thinking what's, what what will appear in the exam. Okay. But do you have questions about the practice exam? No. I mean, if you if you if you if you can do the practice exam quite well, if you understand everything, and uh, and also understand the concepts here, then I think you, sh you should be fine. But just be just be cautious. I mean, the exam will be similar to the practice exam, but it's not going to be exactly the same, right? Then it lose the purpose of examining, right? So you just should be prepared, right? What if the conditions are changed a little bit based on what we've talked about here, right? Yeah, I mean, if you understand the concepts I just covered um, and be prepared, right? If you don't remember something, make sure it, it's on your note, notes. Then you should be able to, you know, very quickly realize, oh, this is something similar to the practice exam, but it's not exactly the same. I can still apply, you know, this knowledge or this equation to solve this problem. But there will be some easy problems, right? That's kind of very easy. You can just, you know, use the equation, plug in the numbers, and do the math. Um, there will be some intermediate problems, so that. Kind of you, you you need to understand the concepts otherwise you, you won't be able to do this transition um i would say i think there should be some hard problems right like 10 percent um really you really have to have a good understanding of the concepts i mean i think i think i think the multiple choice as far as I mean, based on my perspective, I think it's 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 more, probably more difficult um, than the graphical analysis, right? Because graphical analysis, you've done at least two problems based on the practice exam, or four exam, four four problems. 
the concepts are kind of like more different because like um, the, 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 the practice exams have multiple choice, but that's based on um, the content in Professor James Sutherland's lecture notes. Uh, and the, my lecture notes, I mean, most of them are still same to his, right? Because basically this is a topic, the same topic, you cannot teach very different things. But there will be some, I think, pers perspective quite different because I'm, I'm an experimentalist. He's a theorist. Uh, he's a computational scientist. As a as an ex experimentalist, I care more about you know if you can understand the concept and uh, and uh, how it works and you know what what does you know the, the parameters what does each part of the you know the distillation column what 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 other functions I care more about these these things but 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 basically most of the I mean most of the problems or maybe all the problems for the multiple choice, they come from the slides, right? So when I make the exam, I just go over the slides and say, okay, this, this slide has a lot of information. This is important. Uh, I'm gonna make a one multiple choice based on this. So I'm just gonna you know, copy some as, as one option in the, in, the, in, the, in the problem, right? I mean, I mean, so when I make the exam, Right, so I, I copy that to the exam, and there are four correct answers, right? And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna tweak something to make it incorrect. And, the, and your job is to be able to tell, okay, this is incorrect. So obviously it's, in, it's, it's, it's not correct, right? Because this, this is not what, what, I've, what I have learned, if you understand it well. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. I have one question. Um, in the case that a question has part A, B, C, D, and we can't figure out part A, but we need part A to figure out part B and C and D, how do you prefer that we handle that? Leave it as a variable or guess a number? Or how would you? Because like we don't want to lose points on all the problems because we can only get the first one. Yeah. So I mean, that's a hard one because. For the graph, I mean, I guess you are talking about a graphical analysis, right? Yeah. That contains part, like a multiple part. Um, so, I mean, that's a hard, hard one to answer. But I would say for the, all the graphical analysis, I mean, you, I'm start. I, I, it starts from something easy, right? Given the condition, you need to compute x, y, or x prime, y prime, or like x big x big y, or l prime v prime. And if you don't have that, you cannot draw the operating line. If you cannot draw the operating line, you cannot do the rest of the test. But I think, you know, first of all, that should be something quite straightforward, right? If you know the equation, you just plug in the numbers. And if you don't know that, then really, I don't think you should. Maybe that's what you deserve. But on the other hand, um, if, you, if you really don't know how to do that, I mean, for the graphical analysis, it's all about if you know, you know, I draw the line there, I can do this step of analysis, right? And uh, even if you don't, you don't draw the, the line with the right slope, if you draw a line there, you do the step off, you can still do some analysis, right? And in that case, your final answer will probably be incorrect, right? But, 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 you know, you show the pro you show how you work on it, right? Then that will give you partial credits for doing that. But, but basically, you know, for the exam, uh, just write as much as you can based on how, how well you understand the concepts. When I grade the exam, I will give you partial credits. If you, if you write something, I think that's meaningful, right? even, even though you don't get to the final answer correct. Right? But I think really, if you're given a condition, right, you, you know the fit composition, you know the more fractions x and y. I'm asking you to compute more ratios. You should be able to do that, really. I don't think I'm asking too much, right? Yes. Did you say, did you say how many correct multiple choice there will be? This exam will be now. Yeah, there will be two, just to just to you know reduce the difficulty. So 
Uh, I mean, if I remember, the, first of all, if I remember correctly, because I made this exam like Monday night. Um, so so uh, in a hotel room, very late tonight. So I, I, I might not have a very good memory, but basically, um, I, if I remember correctly, each multiple choice will have two correct, not two, uh, two, two, uh, two wrong answers. Okay. You were asked to pick either two correct answers from the options or two incorrect ones from the option. Right? Uh, but even if I don't remember correctly, I'm, I will you know, mark that very clearly in the problem statement saying there are two, you should pick two or you should pick three, right? And you should pick the correct answer or you should pick, you should pick the incorrect answer, okay? That should be clearly stated in the exam. Maybe you have a question that's asking us to identify incorrect statements. Yes, there will be some multiple ways in which you need to identify the incorrect ones instead of the correct ones. I mean, it's, it's the same, right? If you can tell the correct one, you can tell them. Yeah. I have a question about the last slide that you showed. Yes. 